Welcome back, Chess.com viewers, and we now have some more spicy openings. I haven't done any spicy openings for a while, um, but I get a lot of requests about um, interesting ideas in the opening, what people should play in the opening. So I thought we'd have a look at another concept, another interesting way you can play right at the start of the game that I've only just discovered. So this is quite a secret spicy opening. So I think it could bring you lots of good results. It's very dangerous for black. And we're going to look at this from the white perspective. So what is this spicy opening? Well, it's an opening you play with one E4. And I should tell you that if you want to get some more spicy openings, please go to the library and have a look at my other spicy recommendations where I give a lot of interesting setups with one to E4. And this time I've prepared another way of playing against E5. Now, previously, I suggested two ideas here. One was the old romantic King's Gambit, the most romantic of openings, a nice way to try to give up a pawn and get it at attack. And you can look at my series on this if you go to the library. I also had a look at the Danish Gambit with D4, a very interesting way to try to bring your pieces into the game very quickly. But this time, we're going to have a look at a Gambit called the Belgrade Gambit. And this occurs after the moves Knight to F3. And the great thing about this opening is you don't have to learn so much. So it's a perfect opening for the lazy person. And that suits me down to the ground. I'm a lazy chess player. I don't want to learn too much. I just want to move my pieces out, gambit a pawn, checkmate my opponent and get on with things. So this is a perfect opening for you if you don't want to learn too much theory. So we start with knight to f3. And now, well, the main move is knight to c6. So this is what we're going to concentrate on. Other moves are not so worrying anyway. And now, rather than developing our bishop on f1, which is more commonly played, the Belgrade gambit starts with knight to c3. So this is the so-called four knights variation. In the next video, which I recommend you look at, we're going to have a peek at other options that black can play here. So if black does not play knight to f6, we'll cover everything else in the other video. So all you really need is this video and the next video, and you're going to have a very dangerous repertoire with e4 and how to meet e5. Now, what is the Belgrade gambit? Well, here, I recommend you start with a move d4. And this is a good way to open up lines, take some control in the center of the board, and get your pieces out quickly. Now, black really only has one decent try here, and this is played in about 90% of games, and that is pawn takes d4. Now, the gambit I'm recommending is forward soldiers, knight to d5. So we bravely throw this knight into the center of the board, trying to attack black's position very quickly. Now, you can play knight takes d4 here. So this is the more commonly played move, but this is not a gambit line. It's not as much fun as what I'm going to recommend. And that is this brave forwards move, knight to d5. Now, the secret I came across, so I'm going to share this secret with you, is that in the main line, and that is with black now capturing on e4, other possibilities will be looked at in the next video. So to make sure you're totally covered, then check out the next video. But just think, what can black do here? Well, black can try to grab the second pawn. And the great thing about this secret opening is that in most opening books, everywhere I've looked, knight takes e4 is the main recommendation. But they don't consider the move I'm going to suggest as a very good move from white, but I think it could be deadly. So in the next video, we'll have a look at the other options, which include knight takes knight, bishop to e7, and even knight to b4. But for now, we're concentrating on black being a very greedy player and grabbing that second pawn in the center of the board. And this is what I think a lot of your opponents will try to do. 
Look at this brave knight on d5. One of the reasons I like this position, if you're a chess artist, just have a look at the knights here. They, they, they have quite a striking picture. You have white knight, black knight, white knight, black knight. That looks quite pretty to me. Um, but our knight is very dangerously placed on d5. So here, in most of the opening books, it's recommended that white plays queen to e2. Now, I don't think this is as good as the move I'm going to suggest you play. And after this move, it's been proven that black can get a better position. Now, the secret that I'm now going to pass on to you, which has only occurred, as far as I can see, one time in the history of chess, is bishop to d3. And I think this is an excellent move. Now, you are two pawns down. What is the idea? Well, of course, you're developing a piece with tempo and you're creating a threat against the black knight on e4. We are also getting ready to castle quickly, getting our king safe and bringing our rook on h1 to the e file, starting an attack like this. And just quick pressure, quick attack against black's position. So what should black do here? I believe there are three options that black might try. So let's have a look at these options in, let's start with the worst option. Now the worst option I believe is f5. This is aimed at trying to stabilize the black knight in the center of the board. Black thinks, well, if I can keep my knight on e4, then I can block the e file up. But this is not a very good move in my opinion. And we should continue in standard fashion. And this is what I suggest you do in all these lines. If you're in doubt, then don't worry. If you forget what you're supposed to play, some simple rules can help you out. Develop your pieces quickly, create frets, and just try to get your rook to the E file as soon as possible. So let's follow that idea now. Castles. And now black plays bishop to E7. What else can black do? And here, actually, a clever idea, because another thing we always need to do when playing chess is consider what our opponent's trying to achieve. And if we can stop that, it's a good idea to stop that. So with bishop to e7, what do you think black's trying to achieve here? It should be pretty obvious that black's trying to castle and run away with his king. So a great way to stop that plan is bishop to c4. And this according to my analysis, according to the computers, leads to a big advantage to white. For example, we can simply win back one of our pawns by going knight takes d4, or if you want to, you can try rook e1, and then a very clever move, knight to d2, and both of these moves are aimed at removing this strong blockader in the center of the board, the knight on e4. So bishop to c4 is a very good move. For example, something like d6. And again, you have these two options, the simple knight takes d4. And even here, you're going to go f3, removing this knight. The black king is stuck on the e-file. So something like, well, let's say he tries to develop his bishop, bishop to d7. Here, you can even play f3. And now if the knight moves, your rook comes to the e-file with a monstrous attack. So this is not a very good line for black. So let's discount the move f5 now against the secret weapon of bishop d3, only been played once before. What else can black play? Well, I think his second best option is to retreat the knight back where it came from. So knight to f6. So what should we do here? Of course, we'd like to castle and go rook e1 very quickly, but in this current position, our knight has been attacked on d5. If we simply exchange on f6, we're swapping off our very powerful knight, the rock and roll knight on d5, and we want to keep our rock and roll knight because it's our best piece. So how can we discoordinate black's position here? Have a little think, even pause the video if you need to, and think what you would play here. Well, I think an excellent move here is queen to e2 check because now black has to put a piece on e7 so let's say bishop to e7 and now we can take on f6 in this structure because the difference being we double black's pawns making it very hard for the black king to castle and now after we simply castle kingside 
we have a very nice attack. Now, it's an important plan that you should remember here because you are still two pawns down, but even a computer likes this position for white. And the important plan is, let's say black plays a move like d5, is to first go rook e1. So we're increasing our pressure against the black king. Now, it'd be suicidal for black to castle there. That is just asking to be completely crushed, which we might as well help him do by moving our knight on f3 out of the way so our queen can race over to attack the king. Something along the lines of knight to h4, and our queen can rush over to h5, checkmate, thank you very much, good game. So black shouldn't castle. Let's say he plays a move like bishop to e6, that looks very sensible, blocking the e-file. Now the important plan you have to remember here is a two-stage plan. First of all, bishop to b5 pinning the knight on c6, stopping the knight from moving. And the whole point of this idea is to play knight takes d4 next, and then we crash through on e6 or c6. For example, let's say black tries to run away over to the queen side. Let's take that pawn on d4. We're only one pawn down, but we have this great attack on the e-file. Now, if black tries to escape, run away over there, well, how do we crash through now? White is completely winning in this position. Again, pause the video if you need to. Bishop takes c6. Black has to open up his king and look at this ugly pawn structure. That's disgusting. And now queen to a6 check, king to b8, knight takes c6 check. Thank you very much. So as we can see, another dangerous line for black if he tries after this new idea of playing bishop to d3 in this position, retreating his knight to f6, you have this very disruptive check, queen to e2 check, a key move to remember. Then if you follow this up with castles, rook to e1, and this plan, bishop to b5, knight takes d4. These are the key moves to remember in this variation. Now we come on to what I consider to be the best defensive idea from black and this is the computer's first choice and we all have to follow the computer a little bit nowadays knight to c5 now the only game i could ever find in this opening was played between a player whose rating was 2300 exactly with white and black was the great bolligan now if you haven't heard of bolligan bolligan's a grandmaster from moldova and his fee day rating is about 2650. So he was out rating white by about 350 points. Now that is a serious number. But in this game, he got absolutely crushed. Crushed like a fly in the middle of a nuclear bomb. Now that's a big load of crushing. So let's have a look what white can do here. And what's black's idea about putting his knight on c5? I think his best idea is to try to get the knight to e6, therefore blocking up the e-file and trying to create a solid defensive structure. How do we continue? Well, now there's no threat to our position, so we continue as we have done, as I suggested at the start. Castles. Rook e1 check is our next idea with a quick attack. Now, I think knight to e6 is the best move here. Now, black can try a move like bishop to e7, trying to get his king castled. But he has to be extremely careful in these positions. Let's continue in normal fashion, rook to e1. And this creates some pressure along the e-file. And now, what happens if black decides to castle here? Well, we see a typical idea for this variation. And this is a key tactical point that you have to remember. Let me give you a little hint. Greek gift. So that's that's quite a big hint, actually. That's a massive hint. So in this position, white can start an attack against the black king with a typical sacrificial idea. Can you see the idea? The idea is stage one, take on e7 with check. Black has to recapture, and now we can start an offensive against the black king. Bishop takes h7 check. This is the typical Greek gift idea. That's a spicy move. King takes h7, and now we bring in the cavalry. Now we bring in the reinforcements. 
knight to g5, big check. And this leads to a devastating attack. For example, this is a typical Greek gift idea. Stage one is sacrifice the bishop on h7. Stage two is bring in the knight. And stage three is bring in the madam, bring in the queen to finish the show. For example, king goes up to g6 is one idea. What happens if the king goes back? King to g8. Well, now stage three, the queen flies into the attack. Threatening queen to h7, checkmate. If black tries to run away with rook e8, it's checkmate now in three moves. Can you see the checkmate? Again, a little test for you. What's the quickest way to checkmate here? Queen h7, check. King f8 is forced. The king has placed itself in a box here. Queen to h8, check. Only one way to defend. Knight to g8. And our beautiful checkmate. Knight to h7, checkmate. So we can just see how deadly this idea is. And this is the idea we're going to come back to in just one second. Now, if the black king tries to run bravely into the middle of the board, you should have a smile on your face because it's always nice to see our opponent's king doing the run of shame around the middle of the board. I mean, this king is naked and no one wants to run around town naked. It's just embarrassing. So how do we punish this king now? Well, let's bring in our queen again. Where should we bring our queen? Queen to g4, threatening a very dangerous discovered attack with a knight. And really, black is in all sorts of trouble here. If he tries f5 attacking the queen, our queen can just step back, keeping a discovered attack on the king. And now, well, f4 could be tried. Our queen can now go back to g4. We're still waiting to play a knight check. And if something like d5, the bishop is released against the queen, but this naked king has nowhere to run after knight to e6 check. And this is going to be followed by queen takes g7 with a checkmate attack. One very funny line here, which I looked at. Look how many pieces white is about to take here. Let's say the king goes to f7. Well, Queen takes g7, check. That's one piece we've just taken. The king has to go to e8. Queen takes f8, check. This is like Pac-Man. If you can remember the old Pac-Man game, when the Pac-Man figure just went uh, 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 and just ate all those weird yellow balls. Well, this is what your queen's doing here. Look at it go. Super queen. Queen takes d8, check. Queen takes c7, check. Queen takes c5, check. Okay, that's enough. That's a Pac-Man queen, a very strong queen there. So again, just showing how dangerous this line is. Um, so let's go back and have a look at what I consider to be Black's best defensive try. So if we go all the way back from the start, just to accustom ourselves to the opening moves, this is the Belgrade Gambit, and this is a secret weapon I'm showing you. I was going to save it for myself to play, but I'll share it with you here. Hopefully you'll get a chance to play this. And this is after e5, one of the most common opening moves. We go for the two knight starting position with knight to c3. Knight to f6 now is the most common move, what you'll face in most games, other options in the next video. And now d4, opening up lines. Pawn takes d4, and now we have crazy knight jumping into this central square. And the main line is knight takes e4, but now my secret move, bishop to d3. Knight c5, I consider the main option. And here we aim to castle, get a rook to e1, attack, 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 castles. So what happens if knight to e6 is played? Trying to block the e-file. Well, we now continue with rook to e1. This is a new move, never to be played before. So we're creating a new position after only eight moves here. Now, how would black play here? Well, black should try to castle kingside. And his position is reasonably solid. How should you aim to play this position as white? Well, I, I have a general rule when playing chess. I have a crash, bang, wallop rule. If I can crash, bang, wallop my way through my opponent's defences and win immediately, great, happy days. But if I need to bring reinforcements in, then let's build up the foundation. You can't start a great attack without a great foundation. It's like that parable from the Bible about the person building his house on sand. 
not a very good foundation and the, the house obviously fell apart. You need to build your house in concrete. So my plan here is to go bishop d2 first, therefore getting my last piece out. And I want to follow this by the move c3. So bishop d2, c3, and then an, ideally at some point I want to transfer my bishop to this long diagonal. Let's see this in action. Bishop to e7 from black, bishop to d2 from white. So developing my last piece, getting ready to play c3. Don't worry about the two pawns you're down. Checkmate is the aim of the game. That's what we're going for. Let's say black castles. He might breathe a sigh of relief here. Well, we play c3. And in this position, there are two options for black. Option number one, pawn takes c3. And the other option, let's just test your knowledge of what you've learned so far, is if black tries to hold the d4 square with a move like bishop to c5. Now here, you're gambiting, you're attacking. When you're gambiting and attacking, you need to open up the position. So pawn takes d4, opening up lines. Now let's say black goes knight takes d4. What can be more natural than that? A little quiz for you here. What have you learned so far? White to play. What should white play in this position to start a devastating attack? Remember the attacking move we tried last time? Try to solve this yourself. Try to analyze some variations. Pause the video if you need to and restart when you think you've got a good idea about what you should be doing here. Well, it's that crafty trick again, the Greek gift. Bishop takes h7 check. And we have this free stage idea. The bishop moves, what happens next? The knight moves, and then the queen, the most powerful of all creatures, can move into the board. So, for example, king takes h7, stage two, knight to g5 check. And our queen is coming flying out. So, black has two options. What if knight takes g5? Well, here, Let's bring in the queen. Queen to h5 check. Only one move here. King to g8. Yes, you're a piece and two pawns down, but you're really attacking with devastating effect here. Look at all these pieces of blacks. They're all sleeping here. They need to get themselves out of bed. They're lazy pieces. Lazy pieces. And we continue attacking. Bishop takes g5, attacking the queen. The queen has nowhere to go, so black has to block the bishop. And after f6, there's a devastating move here. Can you see the move? Again, a little test for you. The devastating move is bishop takes f6, crash, bang, wallop. We'll come back to this position in a minute. So I just want to go, if we go back now five moves, let's have another look at this idea. So the idea is after bishop c5, we take on d4. Knight takes d4, and now the Greek gift. Bishop takes h7 check, and then we bring in the knight. Knight to g5 check. Now, last time we had a look at knight takes knight. What happens if the black king moves backwards? Well, again, we bring the queen into the action. Queen to h5, threatening checkmate. And now we're going to get a transposition. So we're going to get to the last position through a slightly different move order. And after f6, let's now have a look at a beautiful finish to this game. Bishop takes f6. Beautiful move. You're really ripping apart the protection of the black king. This black king, you need to take the protection apart, destroy the bodyguards. Bishop takes f6, does this beautifully. Now, what can black do? Well, if black plays rook takes f6, you have rook to e8 check, winning the position, winning points winning the game. If pawn takes f6, we've opened up the black king, so we can come in with a series of checks. Queen g6 check, king h8 is forced, and our very important attacking idea, the rook swinger. You can't checkmate just with one piece. You need to bring in reinforcements. Remember the crash bang wallop rule. If you can't crash bang wallop, look for reinforcements. Rook to e3. And this rook is swinging around to h3. That would be checkmate. If black desperately tries to cover that square, we have checkmate here. Can you see the checkmate? Another little test for you. Pause the video if you need to. Queen to h5 check. And this keeps 
the squares all covered here so the black king can't escape. King g7, rook to g3 check, only one move for black, bishop to g4, and we might as well take that bishop and give checkmate. So I think that's enough for now on this opening variation. I, I want you to go and investigate it. The only other thing I'll just show you very quickly, actually, if we go back in this line, I'll run through it one more time just, just to give you an overview of everything and to really try to reinforce some of the ideas that we've learned throughout the course of this video. Well, this is my dangerous weapon, my newfound, like uh, ex I've been exploring chess a little bit recently. I found this great idea I'm sharing with you and it's in the four knights. And the main line with pawn takes knight to d5, we'll look at black's other options in a minute. I must warn you that, you know, I think black can equalize in some of the variations, but that normally happens in gambit lines. And we can have a lot of fun trying this out anyway. Now, if black follows the recommended book line, we play this new move, bishop to d3. If black tries the best defense, we simply develop. And now remember, we need to get our bishop out. So bishop to d2 is coming. First, of course, we put our rook on the open line. Now bishop to d2, excellent move. Now we have to open up the center, c3. And you have all these ideas of this Greek gift. These Greek gifts work a lot better, a little tip, when black's bishop on e7 has moved away from defending the g5 square. So if it moves away to c5, then the Greek gift works. Now, if black takes on c3, this is maybe one line we just cover. I like the move. Bishop takes c3. Look at these sniper bishops. These bishops are just cutting across the board. And if something like d6, I think a very strong idea here, well, you have a number of ideas. You have queen to c2. I like the move queen to a4, trying to swing this queen around. And you can try this position out, have a lot of fun, leads to some very interesting attacking games. And I love this opening. I can't wait to try it myself. And I just wanted to share those ideas with you in this Belgrade Gambit. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Check out my other spicy openings. There's a number of them. They're little sort of tricky lines. You can try white. They should give you some quick, aggressive, gambity wins. A lot of fun to play. None of this boring positional chess. Check, 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 checkmate. That's the way to play chess. And I'll be back very shortly with another video that will just cover Black's other options in this variation. Goodbye for now.